low-pressure environment, get treated the way you want to be treated at Nimnik Buick GMC. Number one for so many reasons, Nimnik Buick GMC, the new day in Buick. The installation experts at Tire Outlet bring you this installment of ETN. ETN. TireOutlet.com. Wholesale prices, premium service. This is Excuse the Nuisance. Okay, those are the uh, familiar musical notes that introduce ETN on its last legs. We've decided as we just... On death store. We're, we're, like, a, we're like a, you know... Like when a department store goes out of business and suddenly they just put everything on the clearance rack. Everything must go. the ET inversion of the clearance rack where Sticks has demanded a rematch from yesterday's narrow 3-2 defeat to beef. So we've uh, changed it up a little bit. Kat will be our guest Guggen judge this morning. Hello, Kat. How are we? Hi, I'm good. How are you guys? Doing great. Super. Hello, so, all right. Um, Cat's getting tightened up. Uh, good. You know, as only is fair on the Forgotten Holiday that one of the Gugadels would swoop in to snag one of the Father's Day gift packs. <laughs> uh, so Cat will get uh, a collection from the Father's Day gift guide. You can find it at 1010XL.com. Lots of great gift ideas for the dads in your life so you don't forget like you usually do and wind up with a bottle of Old Spice. Cat's uh, going to get a $25. It's the Forgotten Holiday, you know. $25 yeah. from Woodcraft, 25 bucks to spend at Tobacco Cove, and a 25 dollar Edwin Watts gift card. All right. Well, good. Uh, for any dads and cats life, she's way ahead of the game here uh, on a Thursday. It's a uh, five questions I put together expert expert questions. And round one. Beef and the sticks. Who went first yesterday? Uh, Tyler did. Okay. Did. So today, Beef will go first, uh, Cat. Sticks will be the voice you hear second. Um, and you will award a winner, and then I will, as I did yesterday, give the correct answer to the question. Great question. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes it's not the same as what these two give. So, all right. Uh, up first, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Jaguars had a banner year last year when it came to postseason awards. I mean, all pros and pro bowls were, you know, flying around like confetti. So uh, what I need you two football minds to tell mm, me, yes. uh, which a Jaguar who has yet to be a pro bowler would be most likely – to head to this year's Pro Bowl. Wow, that's uh-huh. a good question. Now, I know it is. I ask. That's that's six in a row. I do by my count. Boy, most likely to go to a Pro Bowl. And by the way, I'm a, so I'm going to remind the two of you. You guys think about that for a second. I caught you off guard, but I'll remind you and I've our got, judge. I've got the correct and, answer. And our judge Cat that uh, last year, uh, Calais Campbell, Malik Jackson, Yannick Ngakwe, Telvin Smith, AJ Boye, and Jalen Ramsey all went to the Pro Bowl. As did. Uh, Andrew Norwell, who is was not a Jag, but I'm going to include him. So, uh, well, I believe I have two names in my mind, okay. but I'm going to go with one because uh, they've improved the uh, position group in front of him to make his life easier. He's fit, he's trim, and most importantly, it's the year of the do rag two seven. Leonard Fournette is That's your good. most likely Pro Bowl. I like that one. He's uh, going in a. Di- I think Sticks is going in a different direction. I was going to go in that direction, but I'll go in the uh, the more clear direction. That is Miles Jack, who Tayshawn Gibson named, uh, who proclamated and said that in a couple of years he would be the best linebacker in the league. And so Miles Jack is now burying his head in the playbook. He's relied on his athletic ability a lot his first couple of years here. So now that Paul Puzlesny is gone, Miles Jack feels the need to you know take the mental part to the next level, so to say. So. Miles Jack, Pro Bowl this year, book it. Cat? Do it for the do rag. Winner beef. Beef wins oh. with uh, Leonard Ford. Round two. Uh, by the way, the correct answer, both. You both get. Hey. Well six questions done. in. We got two good yeah! We got two good we did it. I, I think I think you hit uh, the top two guys unless like some specialist, you know, like I'm Josh greatest man Lambeau goes in. The world. Logan Cook. Yeah. So uh, all right, well there I we go. Cook fever. It is uh it is um one nothing beef. And here we go with round two. The U.S. Open starts today. There are so many favorites that uh, Tiger Woods finally isn't being, I think, overly inflated as a contender this week. So I'll ask you two golf brainiacs, which of the two is more likely to occur? Tiger Woods wins the U.S. Open or Tiger Woods misses the cut? Tiger Woods misses the cut. The days of him being the Tiger Woods we, we knew on Sundays, fist pumping and running away from the field, are over. This this is not the guy that we grew up with and, and enjoyed watching on Sundays and, and felt like he was going to pull it out every weekend. It's gone. Those days are over. Tiger Woods is missing the cut this weekend. I, I don't think he'll win, 
but I think it's laughable to think he'll miss the cut. Uh, he's been in the mix. He's been close in most of the events he's played in this year. He'll do the same that he's done at every tournament, which is have a, a just good enough performance Thursday, Friday, and a crazy Saturday, just enough to tantalize you like he has all year. He's not going to win, but he sure as hell isn't missing the cut. Cat? I think I'm going to have to go with beef again. I do think you're going to make the cut. I got a bit of an asterisk. Um, your judgment is fine, but I feel the process was sullied a little bit because making the cut wasn't one of the options. It was either miss the cut or win the tournament. So, uh, Tyler, I feel for you in losing round two. I, too, have uh, been in that position before. All right, here we go. It's uh, question number three. Listening is a skill. Uh, be- beef where they uh, won over I went the- to the Dan Hickett School of ETN. Uh, did you? Enjoy your fireball. Okay. Fizzle. All right, uh, here we go, gang. Uh, your next question. Rookie quarterbacks have suddenly been pushed into a big spotlight this week, and if you listen to ESPN and NFL Network, heck, seven of them may start week one. Which of the rookie quarterbacks is most likely to be a week one starter? Most likely to wow. be a week one starter. Again, wow. I, I know it's hard. You guys aren't used to good questions. Robert's rules here. Yeah. Uh, boy, that is a good question. I, of course Jeff. it I'm is. I'm proud of you. Uh, yeah, I, great question. And it's why you should host a TV show. And it's why we're so disappointed in you every morning. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Alex. <laughs> Thank you. That's hurtful. That's why we're killing. Okay. All right. I'm first in line. Yes. I, I'm loading my rifle. Yeah. You're stalling is what you're doing with your answer. I am. I uh, am. Order it by court. Jeez. Uh, most likely to start, I'm going to say Josh Rosen. Okay. I think he's he's dealing with an old guy who's injury prone. Yep. And I think he's ready to slide right in and take the reins. Okay. I'm going to go with Josh Allen. He is clearly not the best of the rookie quarterbacks, but he's better than Nathan Peterman, and he's better than any other option they have there. I mean, it's, unfortunately, it is going to be Josh Allen. He's probably the worst of the rookie quarterbacks in this class, but he will be a week one starter. He's the best of the bad options in Buffalo. All right, Josh Allen, winner's pick. Okay. Finally, thank you. Round four. Uh, fi- <laughs> our, our little RTG. Finally, finally, at least the correct answer wasn't given. The correct answer is Sam Darnold. All right, uh, we continue with uh, today's ETN. Hey, and- Beef rang the bell while Styx was still answering. <laughs> well, you got to move it on. Get this guy. Right? Okay. We got a clock to follow. Yeah, you got to move it on. Oh. Um, Jacob DeGrom's last nine starts for the New York Mets. The team has gone one and eight, despite his ERA literally about one. Another tough luck yesterday, uh, two nothing. He finally showed a little bit of frustration in what's been going on with with he and the Mets. Should the Mets, at this point of their development, trade Jacob Degrom? I I say yes, and if you're Jacob Degrom, you should request a trade. I mean, they're a pit of misery up there in New York. I mean, Mickey Callaway was talking in spring training about how this is a special group, and he thinks they have big things ahead of them. What what are you talking about in the month of April? Because that's what happened. You were good in the month of April, and you are a disaster since then. Like you're the laughing stock of the National League since then. So, yes, you have nothing offensively besides, like, Brandon Nimmo, who nobody knows of outside of New York. So trade your star pitcher, rebuild, because you never want to be in the middle of the pack, which is kind of where the New York Mets have been recently. Be very bad or be very good. So trade DeGrom, get the draft picks, rebuild. I agree to a degree, but not totally. I think, you know, DeGrom at 29 can still be the ace of a pretty good team, and there's there's some – talent on that Mets club. I think if they could get talent in exchange for Noah Syndergaard and retain Jacob DeGrom, that'd be the better course of action. Winner six. Oh, two, Welcome two. to round five. What can I say? And prepare oh. to die. Oh, and I love it because I'm going outside of either one of their wheelhouses. Wait, uh, which was the correct answer, Jeff? What was the question again? <laughs> About trading DeGrom. The correct answer is you keep Jacob DeGrom. You never give up an arm like that. It's a great question. Thank you. You mean winter beef. That's that's what you meant. Is that what ha- well, that was just me. I <laughs> yeah. don't even know who answered what. Yeah. I, Sticks won <laughs> by saying he needed to be traded. Sticks got a little screwed earlier. Judgment. You need to be I quiet. I, I may hold you in contempt. <laughs> and I'm not the judge, but i got to be some sort of magistrate here. All right, uh, Kat, here we go. This is for all the marbles. All right? Um, uh, we're going to talk uh, in about 45 minutes about a, uh, I think, a way too optimistic projection about the Florida Gators by Phil Steele, who is a, a college football expert, but uh, I'll just tease you in that regard. But you have two teams with here in the state with two new head coaches, with quarterback d- decisions that haven't been made yet, but they also play in two different leagues. So, for all the money, 
Who will win more games this year in college football, Florida State or Florida? It's it's tough. I think both are going to have their struggles, but I think ultimately there's just a bit more in the cupboard down I-10 in Tallahassee. I, I, for the sake of ETN, you want to disagree, but I can't disagree. It's clearly the Seminoles. They have the better quarterback, the better roster, probably the better coach too. So all three of those things in mind, I'm taking Florida State, clearly the better team than Florida this year. Cat, Cat this is where you give them a go Gators and let them get all the— right. All right, I am UF undergrad, Florida yes. State grad school. Oh, no. Uh-oh. All right. My heart will always belong to the U of F. Yes. Go Gators. Yes, okay, it's a tie. The correct answer is Florida. To heck with both of you. <laughs> Kat, you did a great yeah. job. Yeah, you, you did a great job. It's a you garbage will, game. You will collect your uh, bounty. She, she, you both Finally gave the same answer. Finally, judge ever. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Um, and GTH, Cat. I, I hope that holds a uh, great place in your, in, in your heart. Thank Ties? you, Kat. Ties? Uh, I don't know. One oh and one? Listen. It's like kissing uh, your sister. Uh, 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 the correct Gross. answer is Florida. Just ask Phil Steele. We will later in about 45 minutes. Doc Evan Murphy is next. This is the drill. On Friday. What is today? Thursday. Today's Thursday. only Thursday. Today is Doc. Yeah, he's normally on Thursday. He is today. Doc yeah. Kevin Murphy. Phil oh, Steele. No, he, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna, we're gonna no, hold on a second. I'm with you, Jeff. We're gonna talk about Phil Steele's column there today. We'll oh, yeah. join us tomorrow. Gotcha. Doc Absolutely. will join us today. Yes. And I'm leaving. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Out. The 1010XL studios are kept clean.